Hello and welcome to the Sage Goddess February New Moon Ritual. Tonight we have a new moon in Pisces. We have just entered Pisces season. Welcome to the season of dreams. That's really what Pisces season is all about. I don't know if you have Pisces in your life. My daughter's a Pisces. And what they're known for is their vivid and powerful imagination. And that imagination, that ability to dream, they're sort of fearless dreamers. And my mom used to say, you know, their balloon never pops, their balloon never lands. And I love that about Pisces. They, they commit to their dreams and they're not afraid to pursue their dreams. And so tonight, with a new moon, which is always our cosmic clean slate, this is your chance to set intentions tonight, aligned to this beautiful Piscean energy that we have access to right now. So enjoy, sit back, relax. And tonight we're gonna set eight intentions because tonight we're working with octopus medicine. I wore my favorite octopus talisman. This was a gift given to me by Momo of Mercurius Designs Jewelry. And I love it so much. And it, it with the fire opal there, it so much represents that energy of octopus, which is all about change and transformation. Octopus can move through tight spaces. They don't have bones, right? They have those eight gorgeous tentacles. And so if you have your tools, then you know that we're working with octopus medicine. And then for our plant teachers this month, two of my absolute favorites, we are working with Blue Lotus. Nymphia Carulia is the Latin name, and we're working with Blue Tansy, which is the highest vibrational essential oil on the planet. And so tonight's tools are gonna open your third eye chakra and your throat, as well as your heart chakra, because Blue Tansy is a heart and throat chakra medicine, and Blue Lotus is third eye. So if you're ready to open your heart, open your mind, um, and open your throat, speak your authentic truth, and tonight's ceremony is really gonna resonate with you. And because octopus is our guide, and because octopus has eight legs, we're gonna set eight intentions tonight. And I've been guided to have you set four, what I'm calling micro intentions. So four intentions just for the next 30 days, just for the next lunar phase, the next lunar cycle. So these are things that you would like to see come to pass before the end of March. And then I want you to set four macro intentions tonight. These are four intentions that you would like to see come to pass before the end of 2020. Are you ready for that? So four small, four big. I like dividing the eight into two sets of four because it's a four year in numerology. 2020 adds up, 2020 adds up to four. And in numerology, the number four is the number of a firm and solid foundation. And the number eight is actually interesting in numerology too. If you have an eight life path, so if your birthday numbers add up to eight, you take the day and the month of your birthday and then you add it to the four digits of the year of your birthday and reduce it down to a single digit. If you have an eight life path, those are the people who are really good at creating wealth, at manifesting prosperity. They just, they know how to create that flow. And so tonight is your night, whether you're a four or an eight, and again, we're celebrating all that Piscean energy. One thing I wanna tell you while I smudge and kind of get our circle open is, Mercury is retrograde in Pisces right now. And one of the things that that can mean, you know, when Mercury, which is the planet of communication, goes retrograde, sometimes it messes with our communication. It, it, can, it can prevent us from communicating clearly. Things can be misunderstood, right? or you know, things can be taken personally when they're not meant personally, things like that. But when Mercury is retrograde in Pisces, one of the things that we tend to notice is there can be a distortion of perception. It can mean that you get too close to something and so you can't really understand it well or clearly or accurately. And so one of my suggestions for navigating Mercury retrograde in Pisces, especially while we're under a Pisces new moon is take a step back if you're, if you're feeling challenged in your life right now, if there's a circumstance or a situation where you just kind of can't figure it out, take a step back and think about whether and how and to what extent your perceptions of that situation might be inaccurate or at least something might be going on that is subterranean. You can't see it, you can't um, fully understand it. That's a lot of this Piscean energy, right? On the one hand, you wanna engage your visions in your dreams but on the other hand you don't want to get trapped in a dream you don't want to get trapped in a reality that's just a distortion and so really paying attention to what's going on and then like I used to say when I was a coach back in my corporate days I would talk about helicoptering up 
you know, try to get that 30,000 foot view of a situation, you know, when you kind of like lift up a little bit and try to figure out what's really going on, what are the dynamics at play, that higher level view is usually more accurate. And so try to get out of the weeds of your life and try to really see the dynamics um, as, a, as, a, as an interplay of different factors that are happening and, and try to make sure that the view that you have is accurate so that you're not participating in this Mercury retrograde misperception, distortion of perception situation. Just good sort of general advice as we navigate a regular occurrence. Mercury goes retrograde on a relatively frequent basis. And so you're gonna see it happen. You're gonna learn how to navigate it with grace. We all have to do it. Um, but like I said, for tonight, we're really working with that new moon in Pisces and all of this energy around your imagination. And Pisces is really good at manifesting. And part of the reason they're so good at manifesting is they indulge their imagination and, they, and they're willing to create a vision and stay with it. You know, most of the time when people don't manifest, what they desire, whatever it is, in relationship, professionally, financially. You know, I've been doing this work for a long time with now more than a million people around the world. And when people don't manifest, it's usually because they create a vision or they design a vision and then they talk themselves out of it or they let other people talk them out of it. Or their friend will say, well, that's not realistic. You can't really do that. And then all of a sudden they start going, well, maybe that isn't realistic. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should come up with a different idea. And then they, they sort of walk themselves out of what really for them was something they desired, something they thought would be important or valuable or helpful in their lives. So one of my secrets to success, when I'm manifesting, especially when I'm manifesting something big, I don't talk a lot about it until it comes to pass, which can be hard because we live in social media where people want to share all the details of everything all the time and I get it. And it's, sometimes it's nice to to include people and to share what you're doing and to get their feedback and their support. But sometimes it's also good to keep a little bit of your magic close to your chest because if you don't, if you share it too much and people start going, well, I don't know and I don't know if that's realistic and do you really want that, you can start kind of talking yourself out of your own vision. Pisces is really good at not letting people do that. So cheers to you, Pisces. Once Pisces has a vision, they're not really hearing whether it's realistic or whether it's accurate or whether it's viable. They go with their heart and they lead with their, with their imagination. And most of the time, it really works for them. So we have something to learn from Pisces tonight. Okay, your tools for tonight are your beautiful candle. This is your candle with our mantra for tonight, I initiate imagination. Because at the new moon, we're all, always initiating energy. We're always starting a cycle. We're always setting intentions. M lunar cycles, moon cycles run from new moon to new moon. So whatever work you do tonight, that is the energy that you are raising from tonight until next month's new moon, which is going to be in Aries. That, at that new moon ceremony, we're going to be initiating power. And leopard is going to be our guide for next month. If you haven't gotten your new moon kit yet, for next month, it's at sagegoddess.com. The new moon kits always sell out right away. Um, people are loving the plant medicine. Next month, we're working with Palo Santo and Leopard. We're doing a shamanic journey during our uh, new moon ceremony. And so get excited and make sure that you grab your tools. They are absolutely beautiful. And those are at sagegoddess.com for you right now. Okay. Um, in addition to that, we're working with our Blue Tansy Initiation Balm. This year, instead of perfumes for the New Moon Kits, we did these balms, which are solid perfumes. They're pure essential oil that's been suspended in beeswax. And so it's a beautiful way of anointing and also makes it a little more portable. I love traveling with solid perfumes. I really love working with them. And so hopefully you're enjoying that too. Then you have your incense because like I said, our two plant medicines this month are Blue Lotus and Blue Tansy. So the Blue Tansy is in your balm and the Blue Lotus is in your incense. And this smells exactly like Blue Lotus. This has pure Blue Lotus flowers in it. And so it's, it's one that's gonna really open up, especially those upper chakras. And with Blue Lotus, it's all third eye. And then you have your Ocean Jasper Palm Stone, which we are gonna meditate with. And so I've already got a charcoal disc cooking over here. I'm gonna begin by putting a little bit of our Blue Lotus incense onto my charcoal disc. Ooh. And that is beautifully fragrant, but also really, really powerful. 
if you allow yourself to inhale just a little bit of that, it really sort of softens you, prepares you for a ceremony, sending a little bit of that medicine your way too. And enjoy that. And this incense, by the way, will last you forever. All you need is a tiny little pinch. It goes a long way. So enjoy. And anytime you're doing psychic work, if you're a reader, for example, anytime you're doing readings for clients or for yourself, burn just a little bit of that blue lotus before you start. And then your um, initiation balm you should anoint with whenever you are doing um, any kind of healing work because blue tansy is a powerful physical and energetic healer. So I'm going to talk to you more about those medicines in just a moment. Okay, so what I want you to think about tonight, as I mentioned, we're going to be setting eight intentions together. What is a new vision in your life, a new energy stream, a new idea that you want to dream into being? And tonight I want you to be a little bit fearless as you consider what that is. Maybe it's a new career path for you. Maybe it's Maybe it's a new relationship that you want to attract, or maybe you want to take your existing relationship to a new place or a new level. Tonight, I want you to try to let go of all of your pre-existing beliefs and your, and your perceptions about what's possible for yourself. I want you to fully allow for the possibility that all of your dreams can come to fruition. I believe that. I have seen so many of my own dreams manifest. I've seen thousands of your dreams manifest over all these years. Enough to tell you that, I absolutely believe anything that you seek is possible. So I want you to get excited about that for yourself tonight. Um, and I also want you to keep in mind that Pisces is that childlike energy. So tonight I want you to also think about where in your life can you be a little bit more playful? Where in your life can you be a little bit more trusting or a little bit more open-minded? Where do you need to bring a little bit of youthfulness back in? Maybe you've, you know, become too hard or too rigid, or maybe you've stopped playing in your life. Tonight's a really good night, too, to think about how you might incorporate play into your life, and that can even be one of the eight intentions that you decide to set. I've recently been actively trying to play more in my life, to have fun, to do things that are just frivolous just for the sake of doing them in simple ways and in more complex ways, too. I've also been uh, working for the last year or two to look at everything I do in my life uh, through the lens of play. You know, if you look at your work as play, if you look at your relationship as play, if you look at your friendships as play, you're gonna bring such a different spirit to everything that you do. And the opposite is looking at everything as work. Work is work, relationship is work, kids are work, friendships are work. If you look at everything as work, which is kind of the opposite of the energy of tonight, you're going to look at things as obligations and you're not going to enjoy them as much. So maybe try it. It's been really working for me. I've been enjoying everything in my life more because I've been looking at it as play, even cooking a meal as play. And, and that brings a sense of adventure and a little bit of open-mindedness and a little bit of lightheartedness too. And I'll tell you something, it's contagious. When you're having fun, everyone around you has fun too. It really, really is absolutely the truth. So if you want to start enjoying your life more, one of my secrets to do that, and it's so appropriate for this new moon, is start looking at your life as play. Okay, so we're going to start by working with our blue tansy, our initiation balm. Um, and I want to teach you a little bit about blue tansy. Um, and the way that I like to work with these balms, first of all, it's a natural moisturizer, so you can use this as a cuticle cream. Um, you can use this as a massage, um, you know, a massage base to do your body work with. Um, taking just a little bit, you can even anoint with it just like you do it with a perfume. So a little bit at your wrist for what you do. And stop and take a deep inhale too, because blue tansy is so beautiful. And this is made with the pure essential oil. And then a little bit at your third eye for what you know and then just a touch at your ankles for where you go mm -hmm. to guide your steps, mm -hmm. to lead you on your healing path. Mm -hmm. And then don't forget to save a little bit for your cuticles, a little bit for the ends of your hair. It makes a nice treatment for the ends of your hair too. So blue tansy, as I said, opens and activates and heals the heart chakra and the throat chakra. So heartache, heartbreak, as well as feeling like 
you're not safe to speak your truth or you don't know what your authentic voice sounds like, this is gonna open that throat chakra, help you to be more authentic, live more authentically, acknowledge and articulate your truth, um, and also open your heart, soften your heart a little bit. Maybe your heart's been broken or you've had some sort of you know, trauma in recent years or even in the, in the distant past. It's never too late to heal your heart, truly. And so no matter where you've been, no matter what kind of path you've been on and no matter what's happened to you, all of that can be healed instantly. I always say healing is a decision, not a process. The minute you say yes to healing, healing occurs. It's really more about accepting your healing than it is working on your healing. You know, that's how energy works. It's very spontaneous and it doesn't take a long time to see major transformation. Um, so in addition to that, blue tansy unlocks deep emotions. So as we're doing this work tonight, I'm gonna light our candle in just a minute. Your candle's been poured with blue tansy and blue lotus, so it's gonna do all of that work at once when you light that candle. But you might start to feel some of those deeper emotions come up for you tonight, and that's okay. I would say, let that be. Maybe you need to feel into some of those places to allow some of those deeper emotions to surface in order to heal them. You know, it's in a lot of the um, you know ancient traditions, the indigenous traditions, even the shamanic traditions, a lot, the, a lot of healing, the better part of healing is really about acknowledging and unlocking some of those contractions or those places where trauma has taken up residence in your heart or your mind or your spirit. Sometimes we have to go in and find those places and untangle some of those knots to move that energy. Because you remember, pain is just stuck energy. Disease is just stuck energy. And we can be in pain physically, mentally, or spiritually. And all of it comes down to allowing energy to move through. And blue tansies are really powerful conduit for that movement of energy. Um, it wards off evil and disease. Um, it is antibacterial. It's also a powerful antihistamine. So blue tansy, like this potion that you have right here, this, this balm, um, can be used if you have any kind of skin irritation. Um, it tends to really help with that as well. Um, if you feel like you've kind of gotten off track spiritually, blue tansy is believed to be you know, a powerful plant medicine for that, a plant teacher to help you get back on your spiritual track. And the blue tansy flower comes from Morocco. That's the country of origin. And the oil is a very light, beautiful blue. And so that's one of the hallmarks of blue tansy. And like I said, I love the smell of it because I feel like it just creates a pathway from my heart to my third eye, allowing me to feel, to express, and to understand a higher source of wisdom. Now, blue lotus, which is your incense blend, I'm just taking a deep breath there. One of the things, stories I love about Blue Lotus is that a lot of the Egyptian pharaohs were buried with the full flowers of Nymphia Karulia, the big lotus blossoms. And they found them when they would open the ancient tombs, there would be these be beautiful big blue lotus flowers there. And it's because the ancient Egyptians really believed that it helped to carry them to the afterlife with grace. And so they used uh, Blue Lotus primarily in their funerary rites to help the soul cross over with ease. Um, there is a substance in Blue Lotus, it's called apomorphine, that is psychoactive. And so if you inhale a lot of that incense or you um, use a lot of the essential oil on your skin or if you drink a lot of Blue Lotus tea, it does have a mild psychoactive effect. And that may be also part of why the ancient Egyptians liked it so much because it really does open you to other dimensions, helps you see beyond the veil to understand the spirit world in a different way. Um, there have been recent um, medical articles that talk about the use of Blue Lotus for Parkinson's disease, um, that it actually helps to improve motor control for patients who struggle with Parkinson's disease. And for me, it's really exciting to see modern medicine incorporating some of these ancient remedies to support conditions that are afflicting people around the world so many people have Parkinson's disease and suffer from loss of motor control, and so um, that might be something to consider as well. And one of the ways it does that is it activates the dopamine centers in the brain, and so that's how it improves the motor function. Now, Ocean Jasper is a very, very, very interesting stone. It comes to us from Madagascar, and Ocean Jasper, which is this stone right here, is a form of what's known as orbicular jasper. 
And that word comes from the orbits or the eyes. Do you see the little dots on that stone? And by the way, ocean jasper can be all different shades and colors. It can be more green or more yellow. You might have a piece that's more in the sort of neutral shades of tan and brown. But the consistent hallmark of ocean jasper, and especially good quality ocean jasper, are those little eyes or those orbits. And so a really cool meditation that I like to do is to hold your piece of ocean jasper and look into each one of the eyes. You can actually really drop into a deep meditation and ask each one of those eyes to show you what it sees. Isn't that cool? Sort of like reading the lines in rutilated quartz. You know, you can go to each line in your rutilated quartz and let it take you on a journey back to its origin when that crystal was first forming in the earth. And that's a really deep meditation too. So we're gonna be holding this stone and working with this stone as we set our intentions tonight and also as we call in the healing properties of all of these tools. We chose Ocean Jasper because our spirit animal for the month is octopus. And one of the hallmarks of octopus, octo means eight in Greek, so that's where the eight legs comes from, or it represents the eight legs. And one of the reasons we love working with octopus medicine in energy work is octopus is a, a deep diver. It likes to travel to the bottom of the ocean, to those deep and mysterious places. And it represents that in your soul, your soul's journey too. You know, sometimes you have to go into those deeper parts of your subconscious, the deeper parts of your energetic programming, and even into your past lives to understand the depths of who you are. You are a profoundly magical, multidimensional soul. And no one else alive right now has your frequency. No one else can really do what you do, not the way you do it. And so octopus sort of represents your uniqueness, your ability and your willingness to explore the depths of who you are fearlessly, right? They go there fearlessly. And then the other thing about octopus is they have no bones. And so they can sort of get themselves through tight corners. There's almost nowhere that octopus can't wind and weave itself through. And so it's really important for you to consider how you might adapt some of those traits in your own life. Like where would you benefit from being a little less rigid or a little less stiff as it were? Where would you benefit from you know, being a little more boneless and being able to move and go with the flow and, and, and pass through those tight corners of your life without, you know, without hitting yourself on every single edge? You know, sometimes we go through life and we're so rigid and we're so closed off and we don't wanna think about new approaches or new solutions to old problems and I think for me, that's what octopus represents. It's like, how can we approach this situation from a different perspective? If I have eight hands instead of two, how much more can I create? And so it's about almost about removing your excuses for not moving smoothly or not, not traversing the challenges and those sticky places in your life and recognizing that you can get through anything in your life with grace. That to me is the ultimate gift of octopus medicine. So if you have your tools for this month, just remember every month with your new moon tools, you get three oracle cards, one for each of the plant medicines that we're studying, and then you get your one for your spirit animal. And on the back, we give you all kinds of information. So at the end of the year, you'll have an entire oracle deck of plant medicine cards and spirit medicine cards, plants or animal spirit medicine cards. And so this is our gift to you. And so every single month, you're gonna get three more. Again, you'll get three more cards next month when we start to work with Leopard for that Aries new moon. So I hope you're excited about that. I love it. I love Oracle decks. And so the idea that you're gonna have a free one as your gift by collecting the cards over the course of this year, I think that's really cool. So hopefully you're looking forward to that too. Okay, so I'm going to open our beautiful circle so we can begin our ceremony and our ritual together. And again, tonight's all about fearlessly feeling into the depths of your soul so that you can develop a new flexibility in your life to pursue your dreams and to indulge your imagination. So hopefully you're ready for all of that work. So let's light our candle. And the um, invocation, I always write a little invocation on your candles. This one says, as I light this candle, I respond to the call of the universe. 
guiding me beyond the illusions around me and into the great mystery. Opening my third eye wide, I enter the realm of imagination. With every breath, my vision and consciousness expands. I am the dreamer and the dream. Uh, weaving my personal myth from the depths of my soul. Amen aho, and so it is. You are, you're the dreamer and the dream. And the one thing I will tell you is whatever your dream is, I think it was placed on your heart for a reason. I really truly believe that when you, when you live your dream, you do all of us an incredible favor. Because again, there's nobody on this planet who can do what you do the way you do it. So the more authentic, the more bold, the more brave, the more whole and healed and well you become, the better this entire planet functions. And, and you know, all of us benefit. I benefit from you living a full and authentic life. So thank you for showing up to this work. Thank you for setting intentions. And one thing I want to advise you to do, if you don't do it already, write your intentions down tonight. Write these eight dreams that you're dreaming up tonight. Write them down. At the end of the year, at Yule time in December, my favorite ritual to do is to go back through all of my new moon intentions for the year behind me and to appreciate and to and understand and analyze how those new moon intentions came to fruition. It will reinforce your belief in magic because you'll be able to track and see your progress and it's really, for me anyway, it's a very inspiring process. And so even if you've never written down your intentions before, I would love to see you start tonight. These eight are a great place to begin. Okay, so I want you to take your beautiful Ocean Jasper Palm Stone in your hand. I like to take mine in my left hand and cover it with my right hand. And take a nice deep breath there. And we're going to welcome in the guides and guardians of the gateways to be with us this evening. And so first we want to welcome in the guides and guardians of the east. I want to welcome you in and thank you for the beautiful element of air, for the breath of life, for the spaciousness in our consciousness that we create together through ceremony. Thank you for helping us to open our minds and open our hearts tonight to see our dreams through a new lens to indulge our childlike qualities and to envision a new reality, to dream something new into being. We welcome the guides and guardians of the East. And to the guides and guardians of the South, the Fire Gateway, thank you tonight for helping us cultivate passion and curiosity and playfulness. All of these properties are associated with Pisces as well. Thank you for helping us to be strong to have stamina to keep moving forward in our lives. We welcome you into the ceremony space. And to the guides and guardians of the West, thank you for the emotional healing that tonight will provide. Thank you for helping us open our hearts this evening. Thank you for helping us release hurt and pain and trauma of the past in service of allowing a new vision to emerge. We welcome you into the ceremony space. And to the guides and guardians of the North, we thank you for your patience, your presence and strength, your protection. Thank you for my, reminding us to slow down and to take a deep breath, to enjoy the process and not just seek the outcome. We thank you and welcome the guides of the North into our ceremony space. Ah, aho. Our beautiful new moon circle is open. And so I want you to roll your shoulders back. You can continue to hold your stone if you wish. It feels good in my, my hand. This, this size of palm stone is my favorite size because it just fits so perfectly right into the palm. And so what I want you to imagine now as you close your eyes and start to soften into the space, I want you to imagine mm -hmm. allowing yourself to drop into the ocean. For me, it's going to be the Pacific here. That's my... Mother Ocean, I've lived next to the Pacific Ocean all my life. But for you, it might be the Atlantic Ocean or the Indian Ocean, any of your local big, deep bodies of water. I want you to imagine going to that body of water tonight in this vision, in this ceremony. And I want you to imagine sinking into that ocean and allowing yourself to become the octopus tonight. And as you soften into that vision of becoming that beautiful creature with its eight tentacles reaching out, stretching out, 
I want you to feel what it's like to let go of, of your structure, to let go of your inhibitions, and to be able to move, to, to be boneless, to let go of all of the constraints and all of the stiffness in your body and to just completely relax and soften and imagine letting those tentacles sort of emerge and unfold and wrap around and let yourself become that beautiful spirit guide. It's really a powerful energy stream when you start to connect with an animal spirit and allow yourself to embody that spirit and to take on those aspects. And we find with octopus such freedom, such a willingness and ease of movement and flow. Everything is moving synchronously but without restriction. So allow yourself to move and to float and to drop down deeper and deeper down. Remembering that octopus loves to dive, dive deep into that ocean, is fearless about pursuing those depths. And letting the energy of ocean jasper, which comes from the ocean, ocean jasper comes from um, ocean facing mines in Madagascar. So it's all water facing. These are stones that are born of water. And so letting that water medicine too, under this beautiful Pisces new moon, letting all of that just create currents for you to float in and for you to, to relax into, to soften into this evening. And feel yourself going deeper and deeper and deeper down into the ocean, sensing the water becoming darker and the light sort of closing down and it becoming more mysterious as you emerge down into the depths of the ocean. And really trusting the ocean to hold you, to carry you, to receive you, and feeling so safe and held. You know, ocean energy is so maternal all of that water energy is protective and loving and nurturing and a source of really deep and profound healing. And as you move and really start to feel yourself soften and those tentacles moving and flowing in the water, I want you to imagine that each one of your tentacles is a vision is a wish, is an intention for what you are ready to create, what you're ready to claim at this new moon. And so we're going to begin with the first four tentacles, which are going to be, again, your short-term dreams and desires. These are things that you would love to see come to pass in the next lunar cycle before the March new moon. And so I want you to imagine that first tentacle sort of extending out. What is that first dream for you, that first short-term goal that is, that is achievable within 30 days, that's something that you would really like to experience? Maybe it's something really small. Maybe it's, you know, developing a healthy habit for eating or losing a few pounds, or maybe it's uh, feeling more pleasure at your, at your workplace or enjoying your job a little bit more. Maybe it's spending more time with your family. You know, these are all really beautiful short-term intentions that you can breathe life into tonight. And maybe it's the playfulness piece that I talked to you about earlier. You know, maybe you really are ready to, to perceive your life in a more playful and joyful and childlike way so that you enjoy the process of your life a little bit more. So let's bring in, let's, let's imagine now that first intention for tonight. And it's beautiful if you can say it or write it down or just imagine it to yourself and say, I initiate. What are you initiating tonight? Is it playfulness? Is it focus? Is it health? What is it for you? Is it prosperity? And so speak that or write that or hold that vision in your mind. Really crystallize it. What are you initiating tonight for the next lunar cycle? Hmm. And you know, with new moon intentions, it's so important to, to feel it and crystallize it as if it's already happening, as if it's happening today. So what does it look like for you and how clearly can you visualize it for yourself?
and so it is with intention number one. And now I want you to imagine that second tentacle reaching out, pushing out, calling in energy. What is that second short term, that micro intention for the next 30 days, the next lunar cycle? What, what's going to happen? What are you calling in? What are you initiating for the next month? What's the second desire that you have on your heart tonight? And again, try to express it as I initiate whatever that is that you're going to begin, that you're going to call in tonight. Take a deep breath there. And really, again, feel that energy, crystallize it as if it's already happening, already unfolding, already transpiring for you. And so it is. And now that third, that third desire, that third micro intention, short term, 30 days, lunar cycle, new moon to new moon. What is that third energy stream that you want to initiate tonight? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? Give it, a, give it every single living quality you can give it because the clearer that vision is in your mind, the more likely you are to actually receive it and manifest it. So it is. And a nice deep breath there. And then the fourth, this is your fourth short term intention for tonight, the fourth of your tentacles. <laughs> what is that fourth energy stream that you want to live, embody, receive, experience, allow, welcome, initiate? What are you initiating? What's the fourth one for you tonight? Again, this is a small one. You have four big ones, so don't worry. This is your last small one for, for tonight. What will that be for you? And you know what? Let your Go with the first. Go with the first thing that comes to your mind. With intentions, I find it's best not to really overthink it because that creates space for your spirit guides to also work through and to inspire you and to bring certain ideas forward for you. So just go with the first short-term goal that comes to mind that feels accurate for you. so it is okay so now the second half of our intention setting for tonight with octopus is four bigger intentions four larger energy streams that you're going to initiate and again indulging that Piscean imagination these are things let's think about the rest of the year so if I were to talk to you on December 31st, 2020, and ask you, was this a successful year for you? What would you tell me then? And let that answer guide these bigger intentions. What are the big guns for 2020? What do you really want to create or initiate or begin now and see come to fruition before this incredible year, this 2020 year comes to a close? So choose one first. This is your fifth intention tonight. What is a larger energy stream that you're initiating tonight? What do you want to call in? And see it, crystallize it, vision it, breathe life into it, send it love, send it trust even if it seems somewhat out of reach. I mean, that's what this Pisces new moon is all about. If you're, if there's a night to dream big, I'm telling you right now, this is it. This is not the time to play small. This is the time to, to really, really, really let, let your inner child have at it tonight. 
So if your inner child says something crazy and you're like, that's not possible, maybe it is possible. Let that little girl or little boy in you dream a big dream tonight and let them enjoy it. So it is. All right, and what is your next? You get four of these. So this is number two. Big intention, big dream, big imagination, big flow. What's something else really powerful or really big this year that you would love to dream into being, that you would love to initiate? What would that look like for you? Feel it again, sense it, crystallize it, enjoy it. I mean, hopefully you're thinking about really fun things right now. So you know what? Enjoy it. If you're not beaming right now, it might not be a big enough dream. I'm dreaming of some pretty big stuff right now, so I'm feeling really good about that. <laughs> so enjoy it. Because the more you do enjoy it and the more you laugh into it and love into it, again, the more likely you are to manifest, truly because it's your life force that juices this thing. It's your life force that's the gasoline that fuels that car. And so breathe life into it, dream into it, and say either to yourself or out loud or write it down, I initiate. And so it is. All right, what's number three? This is our seventh intention tonight. I know it's a lot, but you know what? This is a big, abundant universe that you live in. And I would love to see you dream all kinds of dreams tonight. More than eight, but let's start with eight. <laughs> so what is that seventh vision tonight? That third big vision that you're dreaming into being? Maybe it's a new business or a new profession or a new, again, it could, be, it could feel really, really big to you. What is it for you? What are you initiating tonight? And either speak it, hold it, or write it down. I initiate. And so it is. All right. Number eight, you ready? This is your final wish for this evening. <laughs> what is that, that fourth big year long, if we're in December, you hope this happens, what is that fourth big intention that you're holding in your heart? Visualize it, crystallize it, call it into being. I initiate. And so it is. So it is. So it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is done, it is done, it is done. And we receive, we receive, we receive. And I will say my wish for you, as it always is, as, as the one holding the space, I truly wish for all of your dreams to come true in perfect time and in complete alignment with the happiness and health and well-being of every other person on this planet at this time. And I always wish that your dreams will come true for you in a way that reminds you that magic is real. I, I always tell you this, but I have seen absolute miracles happen in my own life and in the lives of thousands of people, having done this work with now more than a million people for almost nine years. Each goddess turns nine in July. So I've seen quite a bit in those years, and I will tell you, I believe there's truly nothing in your life that you can't shift or create or initiate 
if if you believe it if you hold it in your heart and you trust and you hold that vision and that frequency I don't think anything is off limits to you and that might seem really overwhelming but it's absolutely true and I believe it in my heart and soul so as much as you're believing tonight I am believing that much right there with you I really really am and I'm so delighted to be able to be here to hold this space with you especially like I said at a Pisces new moon which is all about trusting um, with almost a childlike sense of enthusiasm and optimism and you have every reason to be that optimistic so no matter where you are even if it seems like those dreams are a million miles away I will tell you they're really not they're really not and this universe is an abundant place and it's a magical place and it can move those chess pieces around in ways that would astound you so all you have to do is set the intention and then trust the process and don't don't lower that frequency don't start doubting don't start questioning keep feeding that intention because your love and your vision and your excitement and your enthusiasm like I said is, is the is the gasoline that runs that car that is how you manifest it truly is and especially if what you're manifesting doesn't just serve your highest good but serves the highest good of others as well I find that the universe fast tracks those intentions so the more you can create something that, that serves and aligns your highest good and your highest purpose, but also feeds and serves and aligns those around you, that's really the ultimate combination. Aho. And so from this place, I want you to go out into the world now after this new moon, and I want you to move with a sense of excitement. I want you to carry this optimism, carry this excitement carry this trust forward into your life and also share this wisdom share this message and share this energy with other people you know I think now more than ever on this planet we need a little magic we need a little optimism we need a little joy and we need to really take care of and love and support each other and so the more you can maintain this sense of vitality and optimism and let go of judgment and resentment and anger and all of those lower vibration emotions the more you really will see your life shift and change in 2020. You know, I think our planet is going through this radical evolutionary process and we're all being asked to step up and into a brighter vision and a more unified uh, vision of what's possible. And again, not just for you, but for all of us. And the more that you do this work, the more our planet heals. So I'm so grateful that you're here tonight. So cheers. And thank you to our spirit guides for coming closer and supporting us tonight. I hope you enjoyed the process of leaning into your dreams and your visions of what's possible in your life too. And, and reminding yourself, as I'm trying to remind you tonight, to never let go of your dreams. You know, hope is, is one of the most important concepts, one of the most important um, qualities that we can hold on to as human beings and so it's always important to remember that there's a reason to have hope and never let go of that hope no matter where you are or how old you are um, change can always be right around the corner if that's what you seek it's really true and I think octopus is a good teacher of that how to be flexible and move through your life and just trust the process and letting go of rigidity it's the secret to it all And so let's give thanks and release the guardians of the beautiful gateways. Thank you so much to the guides and the guardians of the north for holding your space in our ceremony tonight, for reminding us to be patient, for giving us strength and protection, for grounding us as we move through the different phases and stages of our lives. We're so grateful to the guardians of the north. We release you with gratitude. And to the guides and guardians of the west, we give thanks to you. We give thanks for emotional healing that's already on its way. We give thanks for a new perspective that opens our heart and creates flow. We give thanks for our prosperity that's already on its way to us from all directions. We release you with gratitude. And to the guides and guardians of the South, we thank you for our energies of transformation, of playfulness and curiosity and empowerment, strength in the South, stamina. We're so excited about moving through this new year and shape-shifting and shedding old skin. Those are all energies of the South, a direction I love so much. And we give thanks to the Guardians of the South for being present with us tonight. And we release them with gratitude. 
and to the guides and guardians of the East. Thank you for opening a new door. Thank you for our energies of air that help us to be open-minded and open-hearted. Thank you for creating space in our minds to imagine new energy streams and dreaming new dreams into being. We give thanks to the guardians of the East and release you with gratitude. And with that, our February new moon ceremony is complete. I want to thank you so much for being here. I want to encourage you to continue to work with your blue tansy and your blue lotus, again, to open the heart, the throat, and the third eye chakras, to heal your heart, to help you expand and lean into your authentic self, and to connect you with a higher source of wisdom. These are really powerful tools. Continue to use them all year long. Like I said, the blue lotus, if you work with that incense, is going to soften you before ceremony. It'll be a really good tool for you to use before you do readings, for example, or body work or energy work. And then that blue tansy balm is a physical healer as well as an energetic healer. Blue tansy is the highest vibrational essential oil on the planet. So whenever you need to raise your vibe, this is what you go to. By the way, I will tell you, we were able to put a few more of the Blue Lotus Incense back into stock because these New Moon kits always sell out right away. So if you wanted the Blue Lotus Incense and didn't get it, there's a few left on sagegoddess.com. We are also able to make another round of the Chimpaka Balm from last month. The rest of the kit is gone, but if you didn't get the Chimpaka, which is the most beautiful flower you've ever smelled. I'm so lucky I have a Chimpaka tree in my backyard. It is the most heavenly scent to me. It, even over plumeria, jasmine, everything else. And so it's the queen of the flowers. If you want to get the champaka balm, we are able to make a few more of those too. And those are also at sagegoddess.com. And then you need to get your new moon tools for next month. We're working with leopard, palo santo, and ginger root <laughs> for power. We're setting all your new moon intentions for power next month under that new moon in Aries. So be sure to get your tools early. Like I said, they always sell out. We unfortunately, we can't make that many more of the kits, and so be sure to get your set early before the end of the day today if you can, and that way you'll be sure to get one and receive it in time for the ceremony next month. Aho. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. If you didn't write your intentions down yet, please do. Like I said, you will find it so fulfilling to look back in December at the end of the year and kind of chart what you were believing or dreaming into being and be able to see how the universe is actively working on your behalf. And so be sure to write them down. If you didn't during the ceremony, maybe take a few minutes now while it's still fresh in your mind to do that. I want to wish you a beautiful rest of this new moon and your weekend, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, everybody.